Hey folks, the other day I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about sin because, you know, that's what friends talk about. We were talking about sin, we were talking about what it means, we were talking about the, the law of Moses, how it applies to Christians. As Christians trying to walk a life, of, a life that is filled with grace as opposed to the necessity of obedience conversation, you know, started talking about one thing and it moved on to another and on to another and soon we were talking about that whole, you know, Roe and Wade conversation. And the question came up, is it a sin? I struggled with that. I held it. I wanted to know, is it a sin? Is it not a sin? Is it this? Is it that? At the end of the day, when I came to is that I'm not God. Now, obviously, if we look at it from one context, we would say, yes, it's absolutely a sin. If we look at it from another context, we might say, no, it's not. It's never cut and dry. Right? Th these things, sin is, is never necessarily cut and dry. Thou shalt not do this usually comes with like 55 caveats. Thou shalt not steal unless thy family is hungry. Thou shalt not murder unless someone breaks into your house and tries to harm your family. Thou shalt not covet unless it leads you to be highly motivated to go and get that stuff for yourself. Like, we have this way of taking what was very simple and twisting it and twisting it and twisting it and, and, and expanding upon it and moving with it and, and adding caveats and adding conditions and adding all kinds of information to it so that we can navigate our way through and often around what was actually said. It's a very complicated thing, the law. And then Jesus comes along and Jesus says, I've come to fulfill the law, which means it's all taken care of. I'm not here to abolish it. I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't follow those things, but I'm here to fulfill it. I'm here to, I'm here to complete it. The law is now taken care of. So now you just have to follow me. And we've talked about this. We've talked about this numerous times. It seems just like just recently. The job of a Christian is not to follow the law per se, as much as it is to follow Christ and to recognize that in following Christ, we are following the law. We will be following the law because Jesus ain't never going to break the law. And if we're following him, we can trust in his leadership. We can trust his guidance. We can trust, we can trust his way, his path. We can trust his direction. We can safely do what he would do. But when we ask that question, is this sin? Usually it comes from a, from a well-meaning place. I want to know so that I don't violate the law. I want to know so that I don't break a commandment. I want to know so that I don't break God's heart. I want to know so that I'm not disobedient. But then oftentimes we take it and we apply it to others as well, don't we? I want to know so that I can tell others. I want to know so that I can make sure that others know. I want to know so that others aren't breaking the law. I want to know because I want to protect others. I want to keep others safe. There's a reason why we still seek to understand the depth of the law. Despite the fact that doing so means becoming entrapped by it again. Because once we start asking those questions and once we start formulating our own answers, we now actually put ourselves in the place, on the seat of judgment. By asking those questions, by formulating those answers, by coming to our own conclusions, we begin to tell ourselves and our neighbors and, our, and the people around us what we have decided is and is not acceptable, what is and is not sinful. We become entrapped again by the law and we become a judge of the law. We become a judge of people. We become a judge of ourself. We, in our world today, 
with all the advances, with all the changes that have come about in the last hundred years, with all the changes that have come about in the last 30 years, with all the changes to law, with all the changes in technology, with all the changes, in, the changes that have come about because of science and because of research and development, we're entering, so, we're, entering, we're entering a time where we have the potential to be asking this question, is this sin on numerous different fronts? in regards to numerous different advancements. Just follow Jesus. It would be simpler. Just follow him. Be Christ in the world. It is simpler than trying to negotiate and trying to argue our way through what is and is not acceptable in God's eyes. We know what is acceptable in God's eyes ultimately. That was Jesus. Jesus is acceptable in God's eyes. Jesus is acceptable in the eyes of the divine, in the eyes of the creator. We know this perfectly well. As these conversations come up for us, we begin asking, is this a sin? Is this scientific research leading us into sinful places? Is this research, is this advancement, is this technology, is these, are these things leading us deeper into sin? Are they leading us into a new type of sin? Are we, is it leading us into a new way of sinning according to an old law? The debates will be easily had. They'll be there for us if we choose to engage. But those debates will take us away from the mission. Those debates will take us away from our call. Those debates will take us away from our new identity as followers of Jesus Christ. Those debates will give us a new identity. Judge. And this was never an identity that we were ever asked to undertake. As a matter of fact, go back to the original sin. Go back to the original act of disobedience. That's how the Bible tells us we got got. Eat this fruit and you will be like God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray, I pray that following Christ is enough for us. That we don't need to take our seat in judgment. That we can be followers of Christ. That we can be doers of good, offerers of love, mercy, and compassion. Amen.